Well, the rules for these rational exponents seem pretty simple. So let's try a few examples. I hope you had time to print off the class exercises for rational exponents, and we'll give it a try here. Well, the first one is pretty is very simple, just the definition. So the one half power is the same as taking the square root. So this is just the square root of four. Now they will expect you to be smart enough to simplify that, that this is the same as two. For the second part, we have two options. We can just go with our answer to number one, A, and take the reciprocal, and that'll give us the answer to one, B, or we could write this as one over four to the one half power, which is one over the square root of four, which is one half, the reciprocal of two. For number two way, there are two ways to approach this. One is to say that this is the square root of four to the third and find that answer. Or the other one is to say that this is the square root of four being raised to the third. Sometimes one answer is easier, sometimes not. So for this one, four to the third power, four times four times four, turns out to be 16. I said that wrong. Turns out to be 16 times four, which is 64. So this could be the square root of 64, which we all know equals eight. Or we could write it like this, find the square root first and then raise it to the third power. Well, that would be square root of four is two, raised to the third power, two times two times two is also eight. Whichever way you find easier, they're both correct whether you raise it to the third power first and then take the square root, or whether you take the square root first and then raise it to the third power. For part B, this says four to the negative three halves. Well, that's the same from what Mrs. Milburn showed you, that's reciprocal. So that's four to the three halves in the denominator. Well, we already found out that four to the three halves is eight, so this would have to equal one over eight. For three a, this does want us to take the square root. The question is the square root of what? Excuse me. <clears throat> it's not the square root of negative nine. This is, this negative sign is not part of what we're taking the power to. This is like negative one times nine to the one half, or negative one times the square root of nine, which comes out to be negative three. We are, <clears throat> excuse me, we are not trying to take the square root of a negative number. Well, if the answer to part A is negative three, then this is going to be negative one times one over nine to the one half power. We just found out that nine to the one half power is square root of nine. So this is going to be negative one over three. Next one. There are a couple of different things we can do here with this one. We can put these together. They are both being raised to the one half power, 
we are allowed to do that. Because we have something times something being raised to a power, we can raise each part to the second power first and then deal with the multiplication in parentheses. We should come out to the same answer either way. So because these are, and this only works because these are both being raised to the same power, we could say that this is 3 times 5 to the 1 half power, all being squared. So that would be 15 to the 1 half power squared. Well, powers of powers we multiply, so that's just going to be 15 to the first, which is 15. Or, because this is multiplication in here, we can do the power of a product and distribute. Square this first factor times square this second factor. We could make this 3 to the 1 half squared times 5 to the 1 half squared. Well, that would be 3 to the 1st times 5 to the 1st. We would still get 15. This one, I emphasize that this is a plus sign in between. If this was multiplication or if it was division, we can do the shortcut by taking, distributing this outside power to each part. But if there's a plus or minus sign in between, we can't do that. We are going to have to actually find out whatever's in here. So 3 to the 1 half means the square root of 3. Plus 5 to the 1 half means the square root of 5, and that's going to be squared. Should have saved more room for this. For our purposes right now, we that's all they're after. But this is going to mean, if we decided to keep going, 3 square root of 3 plus square root of 5 times the square root of 3 plus the square root of 5. We're going to have to do double distributive. Square root of 3 times the square root of 3, that's 3. Square root of 3 times the square root of 5 equals the square root of 15. Square root of 5 times square root of 3 again equals square root of 15. And the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is 5. So we would end up with 8 plus 2 times the square root of 15. Definitely not the same as squaring each one of these. Do these look a little fancier? They're just longer looking. They're not that bad. One way of approaching these is if you have a negative power, you get rid of that first by taking the reciprocal. That might not be your approach. You might want to take the square roots first and then do the reciprocal. It will still work either way. If we do take the reciprocal first, that would make this then to the positive one half. So we could say this is 25, <clears throat> excuse me, over 49 to the positive one half. And then we just take the square root of 25 over 49. Well, that's going to be. We can just take the square root of 25, divide it by the square root of 49, 5 sevenths.
Next one. We can write this as two ways. We can write it as the square root of four ninths being cubed, or we can write it as the square root of four ninths and then that answer being cubed. We can either cube it first and then take the square root or we can take the square root first and then cube it. So this is something like the square root of 64 over 729, and then we take the square root of it, which would come out to 8 over 27, or we can take the square root of 2 ninths I'm sorry, the square root of 4 ninths, which is 2 thirds, and then cube it, which is going to come out to be 8 twenty sevenths. Either way, we would get 8 over 27. Personally, for me, this way was easier. Okay. For this one, we can just apply the taking power of a power. This is going to be the same as 8 to the negative 1 sixth times negative 2. Just multiply the exponents together. So that's going to make it 8 to the positive 2 sixths. And we can reduce that fraction. That would be 8 the one-third, which means the cube root of 8. And I'm sure you know that we'd have to take 2 times 2 times 2 to get 8. Next one's a little different. Both of these are being raised to the 3 halves power. So we are allowed to say, allowed to rewrite this as 8 times 2 to the 3 halves power. That we, because, only because these are the same power, we're allowed to say that they are each being raised to that power. So that would be 16 to the 3 halves. And once again, we have two options. We can either cube the 16 and then take the square root, or we can take the square root of 16 and then cube it. Either way is going to work. So we can take the square root of 16 to the third power, and I have no idea what that is, what 16 to the third power is, or we can take the square root of 16 and then cube that answer. Now this one I can do in my head. Square root of 16 is going to be 4. 4 cubed will come out to be 64. If we had raised 16 to the third power and then taken the square root, we would still have gotten 64. Just have a couple more here. So this one, I like this problem because it illustrates a common mistake people make. It says this entire parentheses is being raised to the second power. Because this is multiplication, we can just apply the square to the 2 and apply it to the x to the negative one third. 
we can just multiply this is really 2 to the first. So being raised to the second, that would make this 2 to the 2 times x to the whatever negative 1 third times 2 is. So now we have 4 times 1 over x to the 2 thirds. Which is going to be 4 times 1 over the cube root of x squared. Or we could say the cube root of x squared. And they would usually put the 4 on the top here. This one isn't as bad as it looks. <clears throat> we have a division problem. That means we can raise each one of these to the one third. Just apply the power to both the numerator and the denominator. So it'd be 125 to the one third. X to the sixth to the one third. So that would be the cube root of 125. Now we can multiply these two together. 6 times 1 third, 6 over 1 times 1 over 3, that's going to be x to the second. And the cube root of 25 is 5. So the simplest form of the answer would be 5 over x to the second. Just two more. Hang on. With this one, there's this 2 down here in the bottom. It is not being raised to the negative 2 thirds or to the 1 third. This is 2 to the first power. And I know Mrs. Milburn showed us how to break it up, that we can make this like 1 over 2. Leave that separate. And then separately treat the same base x's here. We have two options for this x to the one third. My one third didn't do not too well there. Over x to the negative two thirds. We can go ahead and subtract. One third subtract negative two thirds should be x to the three thirds. That's one option. Another option is to take anything with a negative power and move it so that x to the negative two thirds down here move it from downstairs to upstairs and now we'd have x to the one-third times x to the negative two-thirds but when it moved upstairs it became a positive two-thirds so that would give us x to the three-thirds adding the exponents or just plain old x this would come out the same, one-third subtract negative two-thirds would end up being one-third plus two-thirds. Now, all together, we already had the one-half, and with the x's, those came out to x, so we could write it as one-half x, or we could write it as x over two. 
the last one. Okay, we're just going to use, I mean, if this had been 2x times 4x, we would just multiply the coefficients and multiply the x's. Well, that's what we're going to do here. We're going to multiply the coefficients and, I'm sorry, add up the x's. I definitely spoke wrong there. We're going to multiply the coefficients. We're going to multiply the x's by adding the coefficients. So the 2 times, we can even rewrite this as 2 times 4 times x to the 3 halves times x to the negative 1 half. So this is an 8 times, we can just add these exponents. 3 halves plus negative 1 half would make this x to the 2 halves. Which is the same as 8 times x to the 1st or 8x. If you wish to, you could do this problem differently. You could write it by dropping the x to the negative 1 half to the bottom as x to the 1 half. Now the 4 would not drop to the bottom because it's not being raised to the negative 1 half. It's just plain old 4 to the 1st. And then we would have 8 times x to the 3 halves divided by x to the 1 half. And we can accomplish the division by subtracting the exponents. And we'd still get 8x to the 1st, or 8x. So if you can make your way through all of these, please check out the document with some comments and cautions on it where people make common mistakes, and then move on to the document with the robots on it. That's a practice from the state of New York. In the state of New York, you have to pass the state exam in a class in order to get credit for the course. We do not have that here in Delaware.